Hello and welcome to another Killer Whale Special Edition here on Tradewise. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking to another project that did fantastically well on the show with five of the Killer Whales giving them a swim. And this time it's Catbotica, which is an NFT project slash metaverse slash game. They've got an awful lot going on with a really interesting IP. So I wanted to dig deeper and find out more about their vision. I've got an interview with co-founder Jin coming up for you very, very shortly. But I just wanted to say before we get started, if you do enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me on the channel and helps to get the content out there. And if you haven't subscribed, then you may want to think about subscribing so you don't miss future videos like this from me. But with all that being said, let's jump straight into finding out more about Catbotica. So hi, Jin. Thank you so much for joining me today. And also, first of all, just a huge congratulations on your massive success on the Killer Whale show. <laughs> How was it uh, pitching to, to the Killer Whales, first of all? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for having us on the show and uh, glad to be here. Uh, it was uh, pretty challenging. Uh, I know the show was, uh, what you see, is pretty abbreviated. Um, but man, we were sweat bullets. Like they were not, they didn't go easy for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of glad that a lot of those questions, a lot of stuff didn't uh, actually make it to the uh, the show there. But it was uh, it was it was very challenging. Um, but there was uh, also the uh, the producers were great. You know, really keeping us comfortable, making sure we were uh, feeling like we're taken care of. All our answers, questions were answered. And the studio itself was fantastic. You know, being in the dark night, the uh, the back cave that was super cool. Uh, the lighting effects and everything, and you know, the production was top notch. So it really felt like okay, we're we're going to something here that is going to be um, something really to to look out for and watch out for. So it was uh, it was great. To, we had a great time actually. Yeah, awesome. It's a fantastic show. Anyone that's not watched it, make sure you jump over to the Hello Labs website and uh, you can stream it on there. It's also available on Apple TV uh amazon prime all sorts of places you, you can find it uh, all over the place now so uh, so yeah uh, check out that show if you've not already seen it um but really what i wanted to do in this video is, is do a bit more of a deep dive really I, I feel like we all got um just just a little taster of what cat botica is all about um but why don't you tell us more about the uh, the vision what what actually is the vision for cat botica so cat botica uh, all of uh, the other four co-founders a total of five of us uh, we're all family guys. We all have kids. You know, we're dads, right? And this whole Web3 is sort of not quite like our, a right fit for us. Uh, but for each one of us, have things bringing content um, really from the creator side of things, uh, really want to bring and have an opportunity to create that doesn't really exist in the Web2 world. Uh, so it's really important for us to represent from a family friendly perspective uh, and also from a creator's perspective. How is it that a brand and IP that typically doesn't really see the light of day through the community, through the NFT, through Web3 is able to emerge and have an opportunity mm -hmm. to come and uh, be represented? So those are probably the two main things that we are really kind of coming from a uh, basis of a family friendly and then really from a creator. We are the creators. Okay, perfect. And so tell me then, what is Catbotica? Like, where, where did the idea come from? And uh, what do you kind of, what do you want people to gain from kind of, um, you know, diving into to this particular project? Yeah, so the actual first artwork, it comes from the brain, the creative genius of, uh, of one of our co-founders, Darren Rawls, goes by Rawls. And he has, uh, he loves cats, he loves robots. So he put together a cat robot. Right. Yeah. And for us, the whole story, you know, it's fun, obviously. There's a whole tech component to it. Uh, all everything hand-drawn. I know that the, the show talked about generative AI, but it was actually generative. AI was not part of that at all. It's all fully hand-drawn. Uh, and uh, I think there was, you know, Rawls is a fantastic storyteller. So you throw in elements of mystery, of intrigue, of family, of drama, of joy, of sorrow, everything of that kind. So it's really meant to be a, 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 a really gripping kind of narrative. Then you throw the space elements, the cats and the robots. So we have a lot of different threads that uh, go through the, the entire thread. And, but that's that's kind of a core in the heart of uh, the story itself of Catbotica is the cats, robots and a fantastic story behind it. 
Great. So, so there's NFTs um, available. Um, so there's a, an existing NFT collection, and then people can um, can kind of engage, can they, with stories? It, does it does it kind of work that each character has a story, or are they just like some central characters, or how does that work? Yeah, we've been focusing on creating a canon for the lore and the narrative to exist. So our focus really has been from the creatives. We wanted to roll out a whole universe in the world. And from that starting point, then other creatives and other holders and community members can participate. Now, that's been a, a quite a, uh, a long arc of uh, getting to the point where we can invite and include the community. So we haven't gotten quite there. Uh, so our journey has been, how do we roll this out, our story, and then create the tools and the resources so that we can be able to empower other creatives. That's kind of has been our process till now. Uh, and that's something that we're very much looking forward to for the next phase of where we are. Brilliant. And um, as well as um, the sort of NFTs and the stories, it looks like there's games in this universe as well. So how does that work? Yeah, so when we started off, we had three main kind of uh, targets and goals. It was a game, an animation of some, some sort, animated series, and a metaverse. And uh, so all three are going to play out for us. One of the things that really works in our favor is that uh, Will Chang, he's on the 3D, 3D side of things, and uh, Koichi, a pipeline specialist, and Raw is a 2D guy. Between them, they are creating all of the 3D, going from 2D to 3D, all of the assets that can be used in all three. So it was kind of a, not a running joke, but our thing was we are developing all three simultaneously because essentially we're creating for the animation, the sound lots for these characters, the environments, that same environment will be the game, the game layout and would also be the metaverse that you would now inhabit. So that was kind of our focus, and we were trying to, you know, take down three major uh, milestones and have the same pipeline go through that. So really focusing on efficiencies and operations and logistics and understanding how the pipeline and the production line would work. Our guys being in film animation, they very clearly understood the time and the requirements and what you need to do to get to that. So that's been kind of how we're operating. So gaming right now is probably the closest uh, where we want to be heading. And right now with NFTs and gaming, that's the new meta for the 24, 25 cycle. Yeah. So we're very clear on that. A lot of our focus and my focus has been building the relationships. I'm based in Korea and uh, Korea is one of the major hubs for esports and mobile gaming and gaming. So we've been, been developing, especially through the bear market, a lot of tremendous uh, relationships with gaming studios and like uh, those kind of partners. So our focus is let us build out the 3D assets environments but let's also work with other games and see how we can take our IP and put them into those games. That's a big shift from where we were before with NFTs, creating and launching your own brand and IP. Now taking that brand and IP that we've crafted and now being able to bring that in and now working with other brands and IPs and how do you work coll or collaboratively in a metaverse or a game. That's gonna be a very interesting dynamic where the NFTs were and where they're going to be heading there's going to be a whole slew of brand ip nft experimentation happening we're super stoked for that that's going to be very exciting yeah that, that's re really interesting actually so are you thinking then the focus is less so on developing like your own suite of games that you develop in-house and more so using the ip and put plugging that into um like existing game um game developers yes yeah, you know our I'm not sure from a game side and the develop, development side, you know, typically it takes two to five years for a game to really be fleshed out. So early on, we recognize that, you know, resources and manpower and the creative content that we have, we really need to find the right partners to be able to work collaboration for that. Uh, so we focus on what our strengths are on the content creation, the asset creation and the story creation and finding the right partners to be able to partner up with that. But, yeah, as I mentioned, it's not just a game necessarily. It would really be partially for an animated series. So that would be a different set of skill sets and different set of partners, or it could be overlapping in the metaverse. So we're finding the right partners that can actually we can build in two of the three categories or all three. So we do see that uh, it's going to be a, a, a pretty comprehensive ecosystem that we're rolling out in, in partnerships and also ecosystem that we have. 
Okay, great. And um, as far as the, we, you've talked a lot about kind of the uh, the sort of, I guess, character development and the storyline and so on. Could you give us some kind of clues as to what the law is actually going to be about with with Cat Botica? What's what's the kind of um, what's the creative uh, journey looking like? Yeah, I'm smiling because we finally finished the rough draft of a 245 page graphic novel that Charles okay. has been working on for the past you know year and a half. And I, I was like, you know, how good is it going to be? I loved it. I, I'm a huge sci-fi and fantasy fan. And yeah. I was, there was moments of just like, you know, it's a graphic novel, right? So it's very long, quite long compared to a comic book. Um, so there's, you know, dips and pauses, but throughout I was, I was gripped by this, this story that was created. Um, so what I'll say is uh, we're going to be doing a rollout on this actually. So I don't want to share too much, but as far as we know, uh, these cat bots came from a planet called Milos, and their planet was destroyed in a solar flare event that was cataclysmic and destroyed the entire planet, and they had to somehow get off world. And so we have a uh, set of human characters, set of cat characters, set of these cat robot characters that are going to be playing out in that. But how prior to the cataclysmic event happening, what the characters were doing in preparation, living their life, and you know, the, the mundane aspects of it, making pizza, uh, but also planning a whole strategy of how to how to uh, save the civilization, save the planet. So there's like a whole strata of different, like, you know, storylines. And, you know, obviously, I, I, you clearly see I'm excited. I'm geeking out on the story. Um, that's so some of the parts there. It's, you know, there's going to be sci-fi, fantasy, some romance, uh, some family drama. It's, 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 it's going to be jam-packed. Fantastic. Sounds really good. And uh, I mean, I've got uh, kids myself as well. So this sounds like the sort of thing that uh, I'd love to to spend some time uh, with them on. So uh, please make sure you share it with me as soon as there's uh, something available. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to have a look at it myself and uh, and share it with the family as well. Will do. Just a quick note on that. If I can, we have an activity book that Rawls drew out. It's about 20 pages, coloring, puzzles, and it's a, it's a, it's a great actual book. And we also have a, a Capodica song. We have a cat body to dance. My kids dance to this. I think I mentioned that on the uh, on the show itself. Uh, so there's a there's we're really trying to make this a mm -hmm. opportunity. There's so few opportunities where parents and kids can enjoy something together. So that's going to be one of the things that we really want to have an emphasis on as well. So I'll, I'll send you one of the activity books when I get a chance. Yeah, that that'd be fantastic. Thank you. So okay, it's starting to sort of come together now. I feel like I'm getting a much more uh, a much more in depth idea of what the what the whole concept of cat Botica is about. Um, for those that are wanting to sort of um, get involved straight away, what can someone do uh, right now, and what's the kind of roadmap looking like? What will they be able to do over the over the coming sort of months? So right off the bat, you can go to uh, one of the marketplaces. OpenSea is the predominant one. We have the two D Genesis, which is going to be the hand drawn character, and it's going to have a whole bunch of traits. The second collection we launched is the utility one. It's a token, it's an NV1. And basically if you use this, you can convert your 2D into a fully uh, rigged and animated 3D, which we're calling a replicat. So those are the currently the three collections you have. So if you go to OpenSea, they're all available on OpenSea. Some of them, just the heads up, is the Genesis 2D and the NV1s have already been done. You can only have one 3D, so you may just want to buy that 3D if that's what you're looking for. But if you want the whole gamut, I would buy the 2D Genesis to start, the NV1, burn this, and get your 3D. And beyond that, we have several collections that uh, we're still in the rolling out phase. So there's a, quite a lot more to go. You haven't missed anything yet. Okay. And we'll, so with the with the 3D version then, um, is, is each NFT going to somehow uh, be involved in like the storylines in the games, et cetera? So do, is, does each one have like a unique character in that in this in this world? Or is it more sort of like general, like we have like say 12 characters in general? How, how will that actually work? Yeah, so that was a big question. I'm glad thanks for asking that. We have 12,000 characters in the 2D. Yeah. And our intention is that all 12,000 characters can be turned into the 3D as they were drawn and built with all the traits and all the accessories. So this 3D that you craft will have all the parts and accessories and will be a one-of-one -one unique character that will be playable 
in the game and will be your character in the metaverse. So each one is actually going to be a one-on-one unique, rare, uh, unique. And that's kind of the whole generative element of what we were set out to do. It took us almost over a year to develop the pipeline and do all the tech and all the solutions, all the problem solving for that. But that's one of the big things that uh, we really uh, stand, we're pretty proud of that accomplishment that your character is going to be a unique character in the game itself. That's amazing. Um, and it looks like on the website as well, it looks like you can kind of build your own Cat Botica as well. How does that work? Yeah, that was uh, something more on the fun side. We wanted to provide something where uh, you can assemble your own cat bot, kind of like, you know, uh, build a bear or uh, whatever other, you know, games sort of you want to, if you want to imagine. Uh, and that was actually um, one of the big things that we saw in IRL events. Mm-hmm. We had something with Hyundai Department Store. We had kids assemble it on a big screen and then they printed it out and started coloring it. My kids are always asking me, Dad, can you print out a PDF of, I'm not going to say the brand, but of that so that I can color it. Yeah. So we're like, okay, let's do our version of that. So I think this was actually something that really sparked the whole uh, thread of like how to interact with kids and make them, give them access to this, have them become creators as well. So we're going to really explore that, but that was kind of the basis of build your own cat bot and then have fun with it, draw it and go from there essentially right great and but those aren't kind of mintable as nfts because the NF- nfts are um like a, a limited edition right i think you said twelve thousand in total of the of the official nft so so that the, the bot builder thing is is more just for a bit of fun uh and uh but, but not mintable as nfts currently so yes right now it's just a fun exercise to be able to create your own cat bots I personally, I, I enjoyed so much the whole content creation side of things. I can't draw like Rawls can, but I was able to take these finely detailed, super well proportioned, all the line weights, like beautiful artwork and create my own cat bot. The level of satisfaction and gratification I got from that was actually a surprise to me. And so there has to be some world I would imagine that we would be able to take that and turn that into some sort of character in the future. So uh, TBD, TBD. Okay, sure. And the um, the Web3 infrastructure then that's kind of supporting all of this, uh, the NFT collection, I believe, is on Ethereum chain, correct? That's correct. Um, uh, what about, uh, are you using any other kind of um, partners or, or infrastructure as you go forwards, you know, with more games and metaverse, et cetera? We have several collaborations, uh, active collaborations. One is with uh, Naver Line Next. Uh, they are they have the Doshi dot world. It's a whole metaverse and uh, ecosystem that they're building um, over here in, in Korea and in Asia. Um, and then uh, other partners that we're lining up currently are more on the gaming side. We haven't fully flushed everything out yet, so I, I can't speak uh, about them quite yet. Uh, very exciting with that. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, we do have other partnerships that are lined up that we're going to be doing the stuff with. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about was um, was the token or, or or a token. I presume at some point you're looking to maybe introduce a a crypto token into this ecosystem. Yeah, and that's something that just recently we've been starting to engage on uh, the conversations with the community and talk to them about as well. Uh, we've been uh, doing our due diligence for quite some time just to understand the regulatory. You know, I was originally based in the U.S. and we're based in Canada, so we have a lot more. We have a lot of concerns in that respect. Um, there's been a lot of progress, I would say, when it comes to token launches and how to do that. So we're really studying very carefully all the models that we've seen launched successfully, and uh, we are actively engaged in a couple conversations with partners and uh, how it is that uh, would be best to do so. So we don't have a, a timeline as of yet. Uh, but that is definitely one of the things that we're prioritizing to look forward to uh, sometime this year, perhaps. Okay. So a token most likely is on the way. Can you give us some kind of clues as to maybe what the utility might be for that token? Generally speaking, what's really, there's three kind of tracks. One is a, a governance token that most most projects will you know lead with. Uh, that's probably where we're going to start. Utility token, you already have that in the mentioned NV1 that takes the 2D into 3D. And we have additional utility tokens that we always have planned as part of this uh, process. 
um, you know, they are going to have utility in the game or some function. So we're comfortable with that, uh, that uh, how that's used. And then the full on just a currency is something that, uh, you know, we've seen examples. Uh, that one in particular is probably the furthest out there. Uh, but we are engaged in conversations and how we can either work together with someone or third party or something along those lines. So that's uh, also something where we are actively exploring. So nothing's off the table, uh, but we want to make sure that we are keeping everyone safe and the project you know, stays on track. Yeah, fantastic. I think um, a lot of projects just kind of, you know, perhaps rushing a bit too early with the token. I think just taking your time and, and letting your um, letting your ideas sort of flow first and then bringing in the token later on to makes uh, makes a lot of sense for sure. Um, I'll drop, uh, not really alpha since we've kind of talked about it with the community, but you know, the kind of the cheat is being used these days is using points. So point system could be something that uh, we would be rolling out sooner rather than later. Really test and see what the dynamics and how it is that you would be able to use it. Uh, so that's something that I think is is much more uh, available now and, and practical for us to be able to implement. So. Okay, great. So hopefully um, everyone watching has got uh, a much more, um, you know, clear review of what Catbotica is all about. Um, you can jump over to catbotica.com. Uh, to to find out more and to uh, and to delve into uh, this uh, this interesting and exciting new um, metaverse and ecosystem. Uh, any final thoughts from you, Jin? Uh, anything else you'd like to close with? Just a huge shout out to Hello Labs, Hello TV, Killer Whale TV. It was uh, such a great experience to go out there and meet the crew and just have a, a pretty unique experience. I would say not many projects and teams get a chance to be in such a high production kind of setup. Uh, so big shout out to them. Huge thanks to them. Uh, thank you to you guys and you, you as well, Jonathan, for hosting us here. Um, you know, between the five, uh, the other four co-founders, uh, the bear cycle was brutal. And, but uh, the silver lining of that was we were really toughened up by the past two years, year and a half. And we really, because of uh, a lot of people left, um, the people that remained were just high quality and really trustworthy and dependable and great people. So we're so excited to see what this next cycle comes with. NFTs are gonna be shifting, uh, they're gonna be advancing. So many things that we're testing as well. Um, so I'm more excited today than I was two years ago when we launched, which is kind of crazy to, to you know, two years seems like it's five years ago. So uh, I just uh, hang tight with us, the community, the super patient, huge props to them. Uh, they've been amazing with us. and very frustrated and very patient at the same time. Uh, so thanks to them. And uh, anyone who's, uh, who wants to jump on, on board and join this crazy ride that we're on, join the adventure. If you love cats, if you love robots, Catbotica is your jam. Great. Well, congratulations once again on your success on the show. And uh, I, I really look forward to seeing things unfold uh, over the next uh, few uh, months and years. Sounds good. Five swims, baby. Five swims. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the exciting world of Catbotica. They've certainly got a massive vision and I wish them every success for the future. Please don't forget to give this video a quick thumbs up on your way out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching this Catbotica review and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.